going to learn how to add brake lines into our 2D models in HackRaz. You can see we already have a 2D mesh set up with 100 foot by 100 foot cell sizes and we want to add a brake line to this mesh. So we're going to close out of this window here. We're going to select on the brake lines layer and we're going to draw in a simple brake line feature into our 2D mesh. Now once you're done creating your brake line feature, you want to go back to the brake lines layer and right click edit brake line properties which will bring up this window of options for our brake line. So we have a few different options to choose from uh, with how RAS will enforce this brake line. First we have the near spacing feature um, which will determine the size of the cells that are directly adjacent to the brake line. If we leave this blank, HECRAS will default to using the same cell size as the rest of the mesh. So if you want a higher resolution at your brake lines, you'll need to choose something smaller than your standard cell size. So for this example, I'll use 25 feet. The near repeats uh, determines how many rows of cells will use the near spacing cell size. So if we leave this blank, then only the cells directly adjacent to uh, either side of the brake line will have the 25 foot cell size. If we select one, then there's going to be one additional row of 25 foot cells on either side of the brake line. Uh, for this example, I will leave this as blank. Um, the far spacing field determines the cell size of the last row of cells before the grid transitions back to the default grid cell sizes. For this. So for this example, I'll use 50 feet. And then finally, you can select to enforce a one cell protection radius. Uh, this is going to protect the cells that are directly adjacent to the brake line from being adjusted by other brake lines or other modifications to the grid. So for now, I will turn this feature off. And once you have your settings in here, you can go and select the enforce brake line uh, button here, and you will see how HECRAS enforces those uh, brake line properties into your 2D mesh. So you can see here we've got our 25 foot cells on either side of the brake line followed by the 50 foot cells um, directly before the uh, modified cells transition back into the st standard grid size. So if we want to go back and edit these parameters we can always do that. So for instance if we want another uh, row of 25 foot cells um, we can add in one near repeat and then reinforce our brake lines and you can see now we've got two rows of 25 foot cells on either side of the brake line before we get to the 50 foot cells that transition back into the standard grid. So one thing when you're ever you're enforcing brake lines in RAS you always want to go back and uh, turn off your brake lines feature and then check to see that your cell faces are aligned directly on your brake line. Here we can see that they are. Sometimes they don't always align, but the, um, the reason for uh, applying brake lines into a 2D model is to align the cell faces with that brake line. So you always wanna go back and double check and make sure that your um, cell faces are lined perfectly with your brake line. If they're not, you may need to go back and readjust some of the, um, the parameters and try reinforcing. If we want to add in additional brake lines, uh, this is where things can get interesting um, when you're enforcing these brake lines into the, the 2D mesh. So if we want to enforce uh, brake lines that are adjacent to the ones, the one that we've already developed, we can do that, but you're going to see some interesting things happen here. So we're going to draw in um, brake lines that are adjacent to the one that we already um, set. So this would be an example where you may have a, a stream channel you want to use as a brake uh, break line, but you also want to enforce the banks uh, as uh, additional brake lines adjacent to that stream channel. So when we go back into our edit brake line properties, we now see the three brake lines uh, in here. And I'm going to go ahead and adjust some of the parameters here. So we're going to get rid of our near repeats. Um, we're going to do 25 foot spacing for the near um, cells for all three of the brake lines. Um, and we'll get rid of the far spacing for our first brake line. And we're going to um, 
enforce a one foot protection radius for all three of the brake lines and we're going to see what happens here as we enforce these brake lines. You can enforce them globally or you can force them uh, one at a time through this window here. So we're going to enforce them one at a time starting with brake line number one. Then we're going to select brake line Break line number two, we're going to enforce that. You can see the adjustments that it made there. And then we're going to go and enforce break line number three. And you can see finally the adjustments that it made um, there. And when we click out and we review, we can see that we've got an error here in our mesh. We've got a cell here with more than eight, um, eight faces to it. Uh, luckily with HECRAS 6.2, this has become easier to fix. We can go into the perimeter, uh, edit, or um, we can right click the perimeter and we can select this try to fix all meshes. And this will go through and it will try to fix things. Sometimes it, always, it doesn't always do that. If it doesn't, uh, you can come in and add a computational point to effectively split the cell and um, resolve the error. But now that we've done that, we can actually review um, our brake lines and how our cell face is aligned here. You can see that overall pretty good. The cell faces are aligned for the most part with our brake lines. You can see an area here where it deviates, cell faces deviate a little bit from the cell faces, but overall it's pretty uh, good and what we would expect to see. If we go back and edit the properties again, uh, we could see what happens if we change our spacing, our near spacing here from 25 to 50. And if we try to reinforce these, see how that changed our mesh again. And again, we want to look and see how our cell faces are aligning with our brake lines that we've drawn in here. And you can see on this brake line here, we're getting a couple of cells that uh, their faces are offset from the brake line. So that would be something that we wouldn't want to see um, in, our, in our mesh if these are what our brake lines are actually going to be. So we're going to go back in. We're going to enter our brake line properties. And we're going to try to change the enforcement uh, protection radius and leave it only on break line one. Remember the break line one was the center line. Um, so if we enforce that, um, it's going to change around our grid. Uh, we're going to reinforce break lines two and three, but again, they're not protected um, like break line one is. And now we can go in and see how that affected the grid. And we can see that we still have problems at brake lines two and three where our cell faces are not aligned very well um, with those brake lines. So you can see how the grid and the brake line enforcements become sensitive to um, these enforce cell uh, protection radius uh, features and the, particularly the near spacing feature. So, if we go back and change these uh, back to 25, works these, we'll see if we can get our cell faces to align better with our brake lines here. And you can see that again, uh, we're getting a much better alignment along the cell faces uh, with respect to the brake lines once we've done that. Yeah, overall looks pretty good once we've done that. So it is a little bit of trial and error with um, the near space scene, um, playing around with the protection radius feature um, for the various brake lines um, to be able to, to enforce a, those brake lines in the mesh in a way that, that preserves those cell faces uh, along those brake lines. So now we want to try applying our brake lines into a grid where we have an actual terrain model uh, set up in a stream channel that we want to use and have brake lines set for. Um, so here we've got our standard uh, 100 by 100 foot grid set up here. 
and we actually want to bring in or draw in a uh, break line to represent the channel here. So I'm going to do that following the channel in the train here. And let's call this channel. And we actually want to also bring in break lines to represent the banks here because you can see areas in the terrain where at certain stages flow is going to move out of the channel into these uh, uh, floodplain areas once it exceeds some of these uh, perched banks here. So we actually want to bring in uh, the cell faces to align with that those banks. Um, so we're going to cut break lines along the high ground of those banks as well. So I'm going to start on the right bank here. Let's bring it down. It's not going to be perfect. This one right bank. Keep on another break line on the left bank. that left bank. Okay, now we're gonna edit our break line properties here. We're going to try using 25 foot near spacing and we'll only enforce the channel but we won't uh, enforce protection on the banks and we'll see how that works out for us here. So let's enforce the channel here. You can see we uh, spawned some errors in the mesh. We're going to enforce the right bank. That resolved a few of those errors. We're going to enforce the left bank and that resolved those errors as well. So now let's look at the mesh and see how well it did. So we can see we've got our cell face aligned along the channel bank line pretty well. Like the bank line cell faces are aligned pretty well as well. So this looks pretty good. It looks like we have our cell faces aligned along our break lines as we intended um, them to be. And so I think we got a good enforcement into our mesh and we're ready to move on with modeling. So I hope this was helpful for everyone.